Hello and welcome to a video which is all about criminality and the role of the police. Now this video is for GCSE citizenship studies and what I'm not going to do is talk about why people commit crime because I think that's a fairly obvious thing. Okay, so let's talk about the types of crime that we see in the UK. Well, they can roughly be divided into three different categories. There's crime against the person. So that's things like uh, assault, grievous bodily harm, murder. There's crime against the property, vandalism, arson, etc. And then there's antisocial behaviour. So things like drink driving. Now, depending on the severity of these crimes, they're either going to be dealt with a magistrate's court, which is the lowest type of criminal court, or the Crown Court. And the Crown Court basically has powers to sentence people to prison uh, for the whole of their life or issue an unlimited fine. So there's a key distinction between those types of court and you need to know about those. Also, you should know that courts can either impose a custodial, in other words, a prison sentence, or a non-custodial sentence. So something like a fine, a tag, and ASBO, etc. And obviously, they impose those kind of sentences depending on the severity of the crime and what they think is actually appropriate. Right, so let's look at the role of the police. Now, the police are employed to perform three primary roles. The first one is to uphold the law. They're there to make sure that people obey the law, that, you know, society basically... Um, acts in a way which is appropriate. Uh, they're there to investigate any crime or criminality. And thirdly, they're there to gather evidence. As a result of this, they have some special powers. For example, they can arrest anyone suspected of committing a crime or about to commit a crime. They can stop and search people. Now, this, this is quite controversial. There could well be exam questions on this, but basically it's controversial because it may target younger people. It may target certain ethnic groups. They can also seize property. Anyone arrested can be held for up to 24 hours, and that can be extended by a magistrate if more time is required and the magistrate agrees. But after that 24 hours is up, they should actually be charged or released. OK, now I'm going to skip the court process. And again, I would suggest that you watch a video about that and look at the purpose of punishment. Well, basically, the law agrees that anyone committing a crime should be prosecuted. They should also be punished, but only if it's in the public interest. The law also recognises that the punishment needs to be appropriate. For example, it should deter criminality, but at the same time offer to rehabilitate those criminals who perhaps can make a useful contribution to society. In the case of juveniles, the youth justice system is there to try to ensure that young people are treated differently. For example, they have their privacy usually protected. It should also provide the opportunity to reform someone's behaviour. After all, an 18-year-old or let's say someone younger, 14 year old, who's guilty of shoplifting, perhaps isn't best served by being sent to prison and having a criminal record for the rest of their life. Now, just to get back to something that I may have mentioned earlier, which is basically the role of the police is not to decide who goes to court. That's the role of the Crown Prosecution Service. And they're there to basically decide if there's sufficient evidence for a crime to proceed to court. And again, you might want to look up what the Crown Prosecution Service do and their role in the kind of judicial system. OK, my last point that I'm going to look at within this video is the role of the public. And Magna Carta is largely not in use today. However, it does give four clauses which are, or does provide four clauses which are still used. Now, three of these are really important. It, one of them is basically that no one should be imprisoned for no reason. You can't have arbitrary arrest. The second one is that you should be tried by your peers. In other words, it shouldn't be anyone 
of a higher authority who basically decides if you're innocent or guilty. It should be people of equivalent status. The last one is that you should receive a fair and quick trial. So ultimately, this means that the public have a large role in the justice system. One, you might be asked to uh, act as a juror, so you might have to do jury service, which you are required to do and you can't usually get out of. And you pay, face a possible fine if you try to uh, get away from the duty without giving good reason. You may be called as a witness. Again, if you don't turn up to court as a witness, you can be held in contempt of court. You might be a victim of crime or you might act as a magistrate. So someone who volunteers to uh, you know, deal with criminals. You could be a special constable, so a volunteer police officer. You could be a police commissioner who oversees what the police do, or you could be a member of a tribunal hearing. In other words, someone who you know appears in an informal court. Now, obviously, these are all important roles. And again, I would suggest that you look at these and have a look at what the specific terms mean and revise them accordingly.